Hi and welcome back to SGTV. Today we are joined by Brett Murray from Murray's Electrical. As you said earlier, it's a very inventive name, that. <laughs> well, everybody was calling us that as we were turning up on site, so if you get labelled with a name, you stick with it, don't you? But um, as we said, it's, it's, it's been nice to have someone back in the studio because uh, it's been such a long time since we've been able to do this, so it's nice to have a face-to-face -face interview, um, and it's nice to have you joining us. So Definitely. Thanks very much for having me. So I think before we get into it, um, just give us a bit of a background about what, you, what you've done before, how you sort of came to where you are now, and how you've ended up in our studio. <laughs> Uh, sort of fell into the electric in industry to be honest. Um, I left school uh, with a passion for motors and motorsport. Um, went into body repair and done my apprenticeship with that for seven years. Was sort of qualified panel beater. The recession hit in about 2008 and that garage had redundancies and eventually did shut down. At that point, I come home after expressing an interest to leave um, to my dad, who was working for an electrical company at the time, and just asked if he even had a labouring job, um, just to tide me over until I found something else um, that I wanted to do. So you weren't, weren't interested in electrics to start with? Just <laughs> there was no interest and wasn't really bothered about whether it worked or not, just, uh, just thought I needed to keep some money, you know carry on making a living until sorting myself out a little bit. Um, soon changed that attitude after a couple of weeks of being a labourer and see that I was getting paid as a labourer, similar sort of money to what I was as a qualified panel beater and got my paychecks and thought, yeah, I need to get qualified in this. Like, yeah. this ain't too bad. Was enjoying the work, was, you know, it was on site got a crack with the lads and, you know, I, I got, on, got on quite well and was happy, happy doing what I was doing. Was, that was in the June I started, by the September I was in college and was, even though I was over the age of 21, I didn't fall into a government um, scheme for apprenticeships. The company said if you got qualified, if you pay for the course, Got qualified, then we're reimbursing the money, and that was sort well, the of the government. No, the company that I was working oh, for okay. at the time. Um, they were a good, good company, but they've, they've since gone under. Um, but that was it. I just carried on doing that until I was qualified, and carried on working with with my dad all through that time, uh, learning, learning off of him, being an old school spark. Done it since he was sixteen, and that was sort of I tripped into the electrical industry and found that I did enjoy it, I do like it, and I'm sort of happy to be here now. Did it take you long to start enjoying it though? Because like you said, you, you got into it because you, you, know, you fell into it and you needed a bit of money, and how long did it take before you started actually getting into to, it and enjoying it? To, to be fair, I sort of got into it quite, quite quickly. I mean, because of um, it being on, you know, a site-based site job that sort of just, you know, the camaraderie you get with people and everything, I enjoy all that. And just the people I was working with had worked with my dad for 20 odd years, so they sort of knew who I was. And I don't know whether I got a sort of bit of a better treatment being a little bit older than your average apprentice, you know, some somebody that everybody knew anyway. It, it just sort of worked and I sort of landed on my feet really. Yeah. That's sort of quite a common argument, isn't it? You're hearing a lot of people say, you should go into it at 16 and work your way up. Yeah. And then you hear the other side, people saying, <clears throat> if you go in a bit older, you might have a bit more of a mature head on. Not to say that yeah. apprentices aren't mature, but no, not always. So. I mean, if you look at my two apprenticeships, the, the motor vehicle one and the electrical one, I definitely took the electrical a lot more seriously with an understanding of I need to make a living out of one of these. Whereas from 16 to 21, when I was in the motor trade, be honest, I don't know. I didn't get the sack like once a week. <laughs> like honestly, it really was lucky to. Have yeah, not I would used to used to come out of the office from from there with people just going, "How have you still got a job?" <laughs> like on the shop floor, that was the general opinion of, "How have you still got a job?" And I'm still good friends with a number number of these these guys now, and they all say to me, "We sort of give you a bit of a ribbon for 
leaving the industry when you did, but you probably made the right decision. Yeah, and that's quite nice to hear. It's quite a success story because you know you often talk to people, and we did the job routes for electricians about how you can change your careers at any yeah. time sort of thing. It's never too late. And yeah. you've gone from one profession to another and you found you've enjoyed it more, yeah. getting paid more, and yeah. it's worked out really well. It's sort, of, it sort of helped my passion for the motors as well because nobody wants to go home and do their job, do they? So when I was working on cars all day, every day, I'd get home and sort of neglected my own because I didn't want to do it. Okay. So now I'm doing electrical all day then I go home and the car's, something needs doing on the car, it's, I, I will do that because, you know, it's enjoyable again sort of thing. So we'll come, come on to that actually because that's sort of how you came onto our radar here at Skullmore we, through your yep. Instagram, wasn't it? Yep. Um, so you, so you, you're into your rally driving and you're sort of doing a bit of a crossover between electrics and your, your rally, aren't you? Yeah, it's it sort of developed. I mean, I, I bought my stage car about 18 months ago and... With it, two weeks before lockdown, um, the car was ready to go when I brought it. Lockdown happened, rallies stopped, everything, the whole world stopped, and it <laughs> gone. And through that, started looking at development of the car, did a lot of work on the car myself. To, um, I don't think it had been used for a number of years before I brought it, so I just brought it back up to spec. A lot of maintenance done on the car and just sort of made it competitive and reliable and also sat there and thought well you know what else can I do with the car while I'm not driving it and social media obviously gives you a platform for look at what I'm doing this is what I'm doing these are my ideas and it developed out of that and also in that time we've me and me and Andy, my dad, have made the jump from just doing labour only subcontracting bases to setting up our own business, and that has sort of creeped its way into my social media pages. Obviously, this is what I'm doing when I'm not doing that, and vice versa, sort of thing. So it's helped you get a bit more work. As yeah, well. yeah, it's it, it has it has led to some work in some places probably that I, w I wouldn't have reached with, without having the rallying aspect to it. And then, you know, it sort of works, it works both ways. Like you say, because of the, the rallying, I'm sort of here today, it's something a little bit different from, you know, what the rest of the, the you know, Sparky community doing on Instagram and, and all the rest of it. So it does, you know, both of them set each other apart from one another sort of thing. But have helped each other in a yeah, way. Yeah, though. No. Is there, I mean, I know nothing about auto electronics other than don't lick the battery and, you know, don't <laughs> leave the battery unplugged for too long yeah. otherwise your keys will be unset sort of thing. But is there, is there much of a skills crossover between what you do on site work compared to car or is it? It's, it's completely different. I'd, <laughs> one, one job that I would love to do on my car is, is have it rewired because I've cut in and jointed and added bits of electrical components to it. But in all honesty, it's, it's quite a, a bit of a higgledy-piggledy mess. And I'd love to have it rewired, but it's such a different concept. Don't fancy uh, doing it yourself. No, I <laughs> I'd probably could, but the time that it would take with like the, the wiring diagrams and just the amount of electrical component, you know, you've got the, the ECEs and electrical management and, you know, they've got wires going to different parts of the engine and, and also it's just a, a different concept. I mean, I, I probably could do it if I had the time and all the wiring diagrams for the car. It probably, I'd, I'd, but I just think it's probably better that somebody else, yeah. you know, that knows what they're doing, would probably do it a lot quicker than I would. Would it be different qualifications? So say if you've got your, your standard electrical qualifications and you wanted to go into automotive, not necessarily cars, whether it's boats, trains, any yeah. of that kind of thing. Is it a different different I, career path? I've automotive electrics that is definitely and, and trying to find a, a good auto electrician is, is always an absolute minefield. They're sort of very few and far between and normally electrical gremlins on a car is you know, I think average mechanics are sort of try and push it away and they've probably got a solution for it short term but a long term is is very difficult different but i mean I, I have seen i mean i don't know for certain but i've i've seen jobs for electricians to be involved with 
train building. So I don't know whether there's a similar aspect to what we do with that, but the automotive electrical thing is a, is a different cat official. So don't our... ring up an electrician asking him to fix some on your on your car. No, no, don't. don't, don't <laughs> Unless you want like a do an that. earful. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, so, so now you're doing sort of a bit of both. Did you, are you finding that you want to do less electrics? You want to do more car or? Are you finding quite a nice balance with that? Um, to be to be fair, I'm finding at the moment that while I do one, the other one sort of gets neglected. But the way the the work has come in and the the rallying's been happening, it's the sort of waves have been at the right phases of time to sort of get away with it. But I mean, the the, the business ultimately at the moment sort of takes priority with with what you know because it's such a, a young venture sort of thing that does take the the priority of what we're doing um but it's just a it's just a juggling act of you know what with family as well sort of thing it's just a juggling act of what can fit in where and always seem to be doing something whether it's home home car or work like but it's, it's why i i like i can't sit still for five minutes anyway so i i kind of like it the way it is so do you think you know when we're talking about um you know, lockdown and all that kind of thing. And was that when you were mainly sort of getting the business going? Um, to be fair, we'd, we'd sort of gone through lockdown. We were we were subbing for a bigger firm on another job. And just the way that particular job went, sort of my dad was supervising the guys on site. There was another supervisor in the office. And, you know, I was, I was just one of the guys out there doing a the job. But... Obviously, in the drive home, it was we, the pair of us, just thought we could tackle this job better ourselves than the way it's going on here um, for a better end product. And it was through that that sort of you know, and lockdown just made everybody look at every you know life choices in in, yeah. in general. And it was just my my old man's sixty six now, sixty seven in February. So it was like if we did get something started. He can maybe back up a little bit, and you know, I'll, you know, I can sort of take take the reins of the work and see how things go. But the other thing that we done, it was probably two years ago, we filled in for another electrician that was doing work for a landlord and a builder, and he just said, oh, "I've got too much work on, and I can't keep up with it." And they come to us and said, can you just do labour only to keep the job, you know, gets out of trouble sort of thing. We finished that and the, the landlord and builder, since that had finished, had always been sort of biting our heels to sort of go on full time with them and there's enough work and this, that and that. But it always seemed like it was one job for a few months and then not a lot else. But we got to May... I think it was May this year, and it was there was a no, number of jobs in the pipeline, and it was like the final push in the back for if we're going to make this leap to do it ourselves. Like this has got to be the opportunity that we sort of grab, and we carried on. We were sort of juggling the two from May to about October, I think it was, and that was I found that really hard with family, two sort of two jobs. The rallying going on, I, I found that very exhausting. Then that job, the contracting job finished, and it was a, a choice then of we either need to go and find another job or we've got a sort of hit doing our and, and we made the leap at that point. And to be fair, it's the one job always seems to lead to another because we did a, a unit for the landlords, but then the new tenants come in and they've been. You know, they've wanted extra sockets and lighting changed and, oh, can you do this and can you do that? So we've, we've spent a lot of time in, there's about two, three industrial units not far from us. And we we spent about three months just going between these three yeah. buildings. You know, That's to, usually the way it goes, isn't yeah. it? You start, <coughs> excuse me, you start one job, that leads on to another, they'll recommend you for someone else. Yeah. Someone will ask who did that. Word, and... word of mouth for us has been yeah. has been best advert. I mean, we've we've done a little bit of advertising around a local area, but I think it's been word of mouth which has actually landed us more more work than than you know paid advertising yeah. sort of thing. And we've gone into previous episodes in depth about 
should you advertise, how would you advertise, how best to promote your work. And I, I don't think there's any right or wrong answer, depending on where you are, what you do, yes. loads of different things. And I, I know some guys that have never advertised, or if they did, it was just at the start and then yeah. never again. Yeah. Some people really focus on their advertising, yeah. and it, it's whatever works. No, isn't I just it? just found out at this point in time that that sort of word of mouth has, has sort of kept us going, if you know what I mean. Where we've we have got to the end of a job, thinking you know almost what we're doing, and then the, the phone rings on a Friday afternoon, and it's oh yeah, we can you know it sort of looks good as well because you know. Oh yeah, we're we're coming over look on, on Monday morning sort of thing, and yeah. and oh we do we do it now sort of and it but it's it's been good and then it it filters on to the next job and um, I mean we come into the new year and we were expecting one of the longer projects to start as soon as we come back and I think it was I think they found asbestos in the building just before New Year or something so it obviously knocked it back a couple of weeks while they got that sorted out but. We had... I'm glad they sorted it out. That's another thing. Yeah. The amount of people, they'll either do, do it properly and think, nah, I've yeah. dealt with this before, it's fine, yeah. just scrape it off. And yeah. No, well, we, we used to do a lot of work in the Marks Dispensers and they were, they were a company that were massive on the asbestos side of things. And, yeah, I'd never, never get involved with, with doing yeah. it the wrong way. Like, no it's point, just, is it? No, not worth, not worth health. And then if you do get caught out doing it, it's just a massive sting in the pocket. It's like, but how fast? Yeah. It's not worth it. No, it's the most valuable thing you've got, isn't it, at yeah. the end of the day? Oh, yeah, definitely. But that's, you know, it's it's de definitely worth, word, word of mouth has, has proved more valuable to us at the moment. I mean, we are we are looking at different advertising routes, um, you know, to try and generate sort of, a, a you know, another, another lot of work and, and people that we're dealing with. But word of mouth is... It's, yeah. it's a godsend. I'm, I'm sure. I think. I think we all do though. When you when you get a recommendation of someone, you you almost feel like there's no need. There's no need to go and have a look for anybody else. Yeah, yeah. These. I know. You've got these, that trust already. Yeah, you got that trust. For you, yeah. You? Whereas uh, you know some adverts in the paper or you know social media batters you with adverts all the time now, doesn't it? And mm. I don't know. Is this yeah. is this the right guy? <laughs> like, but. When you when you get that recommendation for someone, it, it you know it makes it worthwhile. Yeah, I think so. So, what what do you think the future holds for for you and not only electrics but also your rallying and how that might tie in together? I think with the electrical, where uh, you know, like it, it's all very early stages for for both of them really. So, I mean, they're sort of growing sort of hand in hand at the moment, and you know, they are are bouncing off at each other in place. You know, thing, things like this, they sort of. Worlds collide, even though you wouldn't imagine it to. Yeah. And then, um, you know, it's, it's slow and steady. Although we're talking motorsport and electrical, I think if we just carry on building. You don't want to go slow in rallying. If, I didn't know if you know that, but you want to go fast. That's how you win. <laughs> well, I mean, there's, there's, there's sort of two two concepts with with that. One one is yeah, you can you can do that, but. There's the saying of um, to finish fast, first you've got to finish. Yeah. So don't go fast into a wall. You've <laughs> got to watch where you're doing it sometimes. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd, I'd try that, but just just carry on growing. You know, and confidence in is confidence in in everything, and confidence and belief in yourself is 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 a massive. I think that's that's what made the difference for for both the business and the motorsport is over the last sort of 12 months I've, I've built a confidence and belief in what I'm doing and that's helped with the business and, and my hobby. I mean, we're looking quite good with the amount of work that's coming in from the, the landlords and the builder that we've, we've got sort of, you know, they're, they're really drawn into us. A lot of work for for 2022 that's going to keep us busy for the majority of it, I think. Um, and then the, mo the, the rallying, we're, we're looking at moving up to a national level after you know, the success of 2021 and, and winning that championship at a regional level. So they're, they're heading in the right direction. That sounds good. I wish, I wish you all the best, honestly. Um, but it, like I said, it's been brilliant to have you on the show. I want to thank you for joining us today. Great to um, be here. For any of our audience who aren't following you, following you already on um, social media, where can they find you? Um, it's Brett Murray Rallying on Instagram, Facebook, 
And there is a YouTube channel which still needs a bit of work on it, but it is there. <laughs> yeah, worth looking out for though. Yeah, definitely. So I want to thank you all for watching and tuning in. Please make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification button below, and we'll see you next time.